Today parts one and two are very similar. We're given a string and we shall find a four character substring with all unique characters. Here we have two J's, here we have two J's, here we have two Q's, and here we have four distinct characters. And for part two, it's simply 14 instead of four. Okay, so I started here by uh, showing you Java interop. The substring method on a string from zero inclusive to four exclusive gives us a yeah, a string of the first four characters. And we don't only want to do that for the first, and we only want to do that for one and five, two and six, three and seven, and so on. So let's use a loop. J starts at four, that would be the end index here. And then we can say, uh, let's call it a window into the entire string, would be this guy where the four is J, and the zero would be four less than J, of course. Mm, and then we want to check, yeah, basically if the window only contains distinct characters, and fortunately there already is a distinct function, it can take our four characters with this overload and then does some clever hash map tricks. Um, but it doesn't take one collection, it takes individual arguments, so we have to apply that to our window as usual. Okay, so what do we want to do? If it's distinct, then we found a winner. Otherwise, we recur the loop with an increment of j. And then that could already work. Yeah, that already works. Okay, and then <laughs> we could copy paste this entire code, change the fours to 14s, and then we would be done for part two. But that would be rather boring. Let's choose a different approach. So this is rather imperative. Um, let's see if we can make a more functional solution. So I started here with a range function from one inclusive to 10 exclusive. You can see 10 is not included here in the range. So our loop counter will be replaced by numbers from a range. Which numbers do we actually want? So we want to start at 14 and we want to end exclusive at the count of input, right? Yeah, so <laughs> hopefully this is correct. At least they start at the correct index. Okay, and then we can use a for comprehension where j gets element from this list. And then the, the let binding, we can simply copy paste this more or less. This becomes an inner let binding inside the for with the correct offset here, of course. Um, right, and then the if becomes an inner when. I can also copy paste this condition here like this. And... Uh, here, then we are interested in the J's. <laughs> Let's see what that gives us. So instead of 19, we get a whole bunch of numbers where 19 is the first instead of 23, 23 followed by other numbers. So there's multiple solutions, if you will, but we're only interested in the first one. So let's wrap the whole thing in a call to first, and then we get the correct result.